Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Carrie's Gardening Channel. So today is July 28th, 2020, and uh, I want to give a little mini tour here of um, the one flower bed that's blooming. So this flower bed is being worked on. Um, we're moving stuff around and we're taking some stuff out because it is pretty overcrowded. But um, we're working with it to try and uh, get it back to the way that it should be. So here we have uh, some black eyed Susans here. And uh, black eyed Susans will receive themselves and they can take over. So uh, that is something that you want to keep in mind if uh, you're new to growing black eyed Susans or um, it's your first year for growing them. Now, uh, black eyed Susans are, um, they can be a native plant. And I'm gardening in Pennsylvania in zone 5B. And uh, the butterflies love uh, the black eyed Susans. Now to keep your black eyed Susans blooming all summer long, when uh, your spent blossoms are done, go ahead and deadhead them. And um, that'll also help to prevent them from reseeding themselves. Now they can be short lived perennials. So uh, you might wanna let a few blossoms go at the end of the season so that uh, you don't lose all of your black eyed Susans. And uh, black eyed Susans do help to attract butterflies and bees. And um, goldfinches and different birds love the seeds. So what some people do is they let them go like at the end of the season. And uh, they let them then for the birds to have over the winter time to uh, eat the seeds. And then uh, we have our rose campion blooming back there. And we have a beautiful hosta there. Now, uh, if you're looking for a plant for the shade, um, hostas are great for growing in the shade and they do bloom for you. They get beautiful uh, purple blooms on them that um, they send stems up and they kind of remind you of like a fairy garden for the blooms. So uh, if you're kind of doing like maybe a fairy garden outside in the shade, add some hostas in when they bloom. It gives like a that whimsical kind of feeling to them for the blooms. And you do want to divide your hostas about every three to four years. So uh, here we have a patch of phlox and uh, phlox is beautiful. It does tend to take over though. Uh, phlox goes by the roots and it also goes by seeds. But um, it does tend to take over. So uh, phlox is something that you do want to keep in check. Now phlox does attract butterflies, uh, hummingbird moths, hummingbirds. Uh, the bees love phlox. So uh, it's definitely a pollinator here. You'll see over here, hold on a moment. There's a butterfly over there just enjoying its meal. So uh, phlox is great for attracting um, pollinators to your yard. But you just want to keep it in check. And you want to divide your phlox about every three to four years. Now if you have a lot of it that comes up like in this flower bed here, um, you can divide it out and move it different places. And a phlox can get powdery mildew, especially if it's too crowded. So uh, that is something you want to watch out for to make sure that uh, you're not getting powdery mildew on your phlox. See that butterfly down there is just loving that phlox. And phlox is a great way to attract the pollinators to your yard. The bees and different things just love it. So uh, we have some cone flowers here. 
And again, that's another great way to attract um, your butterflies and the bees to uh, your yard. Now, cone flowers will greatly reseed themselves. Um, it's great for naturalizing, but they can have a tendency to take over. So um, you can deadhead these, again, to keep them blooming more throughout the summer. But um, what some people do is, uh, like in the fall time, they'll let the blooms go. And the blooms will lose their petals. And then you'll be left with a uh, seed head that looks sort of like this. Now, this will continue to mature, and this will turn brown then. And um, the goldfinches and different birds will use this for food during the winter time. So, um, some people just let them go, and then uh, they have the birds coming to their yard then during like the winter time for uh, the food from the flowers, from the, from the seed heads. So uh, here we have a hardy hibiscus, also known as a rose mallow. And um, these are great, another great thing for attracting pollinators to your yard. Hummingbirds love hibiscuses, and um, so do the butterflies and the bees. And these do come in multiple different colors, so um, you have different uh, colors to choose from. And it is a perennial, you just want to make sure that you check your growing zone and match it up with uh, the hardiness of the particular variety that you choose. Now this particular plant here is a perennial sunflower. And um, this plant can be highly invasive. Um, it will take over, so you do want to keep it in check. The bees do love this uh, particular variety here. And this goes by seeds and it goes by roots. Now one thing that I did notice about this is um, it can help break your soil up some. Um, if you have like really heavy soils, uh, it seems like the roots, when they go through, because it is such an aggressive plant, it uh, can help to break your soil up. And then um, when you take this out, it can allow other plants then to grow where they couldn't grow before because the soil was too hard. And we have some Shasta daisies back there. And uh, Shasta daisies are another great way to uh, help attract pollinators to your yard. Now, um, you want to divide your Shasta daisies about every three to four years. And these will uh, multiply by the roots, and they also will drop seeds and come back up. So um, it can get out of control pretty quick, but um, keep it in check, you know, keep watching it. Should be pretty good with it. Now you can deadhead the spent blossoms off of it. Now I have not seen it um, rebloom after removing the spent blossoms. So uh, it kind of seems to be a one-time bloomer. It does kind of bloom over a longer season in the summertime. But um, like if you remove the spent blossoms, I haven't seen it um, haven't seen it rebloom. For that season. And uh, back here we have a uh, butterfly weed. And uh, butterfly weeds are a great way again for attracting the pollinators to your yard. Now uh, butterfly weed goes by seed and it also goes by the roots. And a uh, butterfly weed does send down a tap root. So um, it has a tap root to that plant. Now this will send up one stalk of blooms. Um, it will not send up multiple stalks of blooms. It only sends up one. And um, this one here is about pretty much spent. Um, but when they're in their prime, they're a beautiful orange color. It does come in other colors. 
Um, I've never tried the other colors, but um, this one here I do like. It's great for attracting like the monarchs to uh, your yard. So uh, we have some little marigolds down here. And these are the petite orange marigolds here. And uh, we have a few fever over here, which is, um, this is white stars. That's the variety that this one here is. And uh, this is brand new for me growing it this year. It is a perennial. Beautiful little white blooms on it. It doesn't get too tall. So it's great like for the front of your flower beds. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the mini tour of uh, the flower bed here. So if you like my video, please like, comment, subscribe. Please don't forget to hit the little notification button that ties I put a new video on. You can also follow me on Twitter. I have a link down in the description for my Twitter account. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Bye.